everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a game review on this game called Enoch Underground. Enoch Underground is supposed to be an hardcore action RPG where the player takes control of the Awakened, one of the last few survivors in the lost city, forgotten and lost, finds his way, or finds himself inside of catacombs without a goal nor memories, and he starts his adventure. So basically this is a overhead dungeon crawler RPG game. And don't get me wrong, I love my dungeon RPG crawlers. There's only a very few games that are like this game that I could really compare it to, and the biggest one I would probably have to say is the Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance uh, trilogy, which in my opinion was probably one of the best dungeon crawling trilogy games I have ever played in my entire life. I grew up, I literally grew up with Baldur's Gate. And it was probably one of my most favorite games, and once they uh, sold their company, it crushed my heart. But on the contrary, I saw this game and I was like, I have to have this game, period. No exceptions, the trailer looked almost like, it looked like um, Boulder's Gate, or Dark Alliance Boulder's Gate, but with better graphics and whatnot. Now there are obviously different things because <clears throat> copyright infringements and issues like that, but this game, in my opinion, nails this everything almost on the head. Like, I can't even with this game. So let's go ahead and get into the hardcore details about it. The combat is pretty basic. You have a sword and shield. You start off with the sword, but you have to find the shield. You have your light attacks and heavy attacks, and you also have your stamina, which Boulder's Gate did not have any stamina bar. They only had, like, the magicka bar and whatnot. Now in this, the, com the enemies roll and whatnot, so you have to deal with that and your stamina obviously is another issue which I feel like it goes away a little bit too fast you get two heavy swings out of it or you get like three light swings and each weapon has their different swing pattern so you have to actually know your weapon while using it now with the inventory it's completely different you only have five slots for potions you only have six slots for wait one two three four, five slots for weapons not including the one that you have equipped now on your body you have a slot for armor um, offhand, which is usually shields, um, main hand, which is your weapon, and then your necklace. And then you have a weapon skill and a weapon, or a trinket skill, which I don't know what those do, but that's the one part where they separate this game compared to Dark Lions is the vast um, inventory system. Supposedly they have a quite a few different enemies in this game. They have like zombies, like your regular zombies, and they have these big giant zombies. They also have humans and spiders. Those are the only different types of uh, monsters or enemies that I've found so far, which is, isn't is bad in my opinion. And I feel like they work, uh, focused a lot on polishing the game and making the dungeon itself, or dungeons, plural, because there's more than one level. I'm actually on level 2. I already beat level 1. And then I end up going to fighting the boss and going to level 3, which the boss should be coming up pretty soon. Now, with this game, I feel like you're in Rome because you fight these gladiator or look gladiator looking people, as you can see, boss right here. Um, it is interesting because if in that case you are in, I guess, a Roman catacombs because they have like 40 different catacombs over in Rome, which makes it pretty interesting. So that I would imagine that dates us back into like 16, 1700s, which I guess makes sense. But don't worry, there is magic in this game. I don't know if you can use it yourself, but I don't see why you wouldn't be able to eventually. So that would probably put us somewhere around 0 BC to like 30 BC during the massive Rome Empire, I guess, and when there was aggressive murdering. But these catacombs do look pretty good. Uh, not good, but they look pretty uh, well established, still lit and guarded. But there is the point where it is partially decayed and falling apart. So that does throw in some interesting ideology inside of it. Which, I mean, let's not focus on the actual aesthetics, but more of the game. There is a quite a bit of lore in here. You do find a quite a few books in here. I did not read it because I know they're going to be adding more. But it did tell you little stories that, like, let's say you go inside of a room and kill someone. You find their note that they writ that they couldn't take it anymore, that they've been trapped in there for a couple days and stuff like that. So here's where the magic comes in. I'm sitting here beating Goldilocks's little ass, and then he does some, I don't know, some fucking Thor smash and then hurts me so I guess that's a type of weapon skill or magic um, he just did it again but once I kill him I end up going to the next level 
but realistically I'm really excited about this game to continue because like I said I'm a very big fan of Baldur's Gate and the whole franchise in that area um, I would say even though this game literally released today the 22nd of March um, I'm gonna have to go ahead and give it an 87 because I'm totally psyched about this game let me know what you guys think about this game down in the comments section. If you guys have any opinions, comments, open criticism, I guess, go ahead and drop that down there too. And if you want to see me play any games, drop them down there too. And if you want to see more, subscribe. And if you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button.